We've called the block resting on the surface of the table block A and the one hanging block B. And our first step is to draw the forces that are acting on each block by drawing two separate free body diagrams. We'll do block A first, and we know of course that the gravitational force is pulling block A downward. That has a value of 100 newtons as indicated in the figure. And then since the block is pressing down against the table, the table is going to push back against the block. This creates that normal force, which is going to be directed upward. Perhaps we can call that Fn. And since block A is not accelerating upward or downward, that means that the normal force has to have an equal magnitude to the gravitational force, which is 100 newtons. And then we can see that it's attached to a rope, and that rope is going to pull the block to the right. And because it is a pulling force produced by a rope, we call that a tension force. So we can call that T. And then, of course, there's going to be some friction between block A and the table surface. We're going to direct that backwards, and we're going to call that F with a subscript F to represent force of friction. Next, we can do the free body diagram for block B. We've got the downward gravitational force once again. This is 50 newtons in this case. And then we have the upward tension force pulling up on that block. It's very important to understand that in this problem, because the blocks are connected by one continuous rope, that the tension in the rope connected to block A is the same as the tension in the rope connected to block B because they are the same rope. So we're not going to label this TA and TB, it's just going to be the tension T. Now in part A, we are told that the blocks are in equilibrium. We all know that in equilibrium that the total force acting on an object is equal to zero. And so looking at block B, we know that because block B is in equilibrium, it's not accelerating. So if there's a downward 50 Newton force, there has to be an upward tension force that's also equal to 50 Newtons. That will help maintain block B in a state of equilibrium. We return over to block A's free body diagram, and we concluded that the tension is 50 Newtons, so we can label that now into this free body diagram. And again, block A is in equilibrium. So any force that's pulling block A to the right must be balanced by the force pulling it to the left. So in this case, the force of friction is going to have to equal 50 Newtons. That will help maintain block A in a state of equilibrium as well. And indeed, that is the answer to part A. Part A wanted the minimum of force of friction required to hold the system in equilibrium. So that force of friction is going to be 50 Newtons. That is the correct answer to part A of this question. And now we can go over to part B. We are asked to find the coefficient of static friction between the 100 Newton block and the table in order to ensure this equilibrium. So why don't we remind ourselves what the formula is for static friction. We know that the force of static friction, which we called FF in the free body diagram, is equal to a coefficient of static friction multiplied by a normal force. Well, look back at the free body diagram for block A. We know that the force of friction was 50 newtons and the normal force was 100 newtons. So we can plug those values into our equation. We'll have 100, excuse me, that was 50 newtons. And then this is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. And then you simply divide both sides of the equation by the 100 newtons so that it cancels out on the right hand side and we can see that the coefficient of static friction in this case is equal to 0 0.50. It is a dimensionless answer because the Newtons will cancel out. So that is the correct answer to part B. Over to part C. It says if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the 100 Newton block and the table is only 0.25, what hanging weight should replace the 50 Newton weight to allow the system to move at a constant speed? So this one's a little more elaborate. Why don't we go ahead and take another look at the free body diagrams. So the free body diagrams still include the same types of forces, but what we are now looking for is the weight of that hanging block. It is no longer 50 newtons. Now, we were given the coefficient of kinetic friction. So what this means is that block A is now moving. It's sliding across the surface. And we can actually calculate the force of kinetic friction. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that the force of kinetic friction would equal the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Now, block A still has a weight of 100 newtons, so the normal force is still equal to 100 newtons in this part of the problem. We were told that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.25. 
We'll multiply that by the 100 newtons of the normal force, and then we end up with 25 newtons for that kinetic frictional force. Now, another important thing that is given to us in this part of the question is the fact that the blocks are moving at a constant speed. Perhaps we know that constant speed indicates that the acceleration of each block is equal to zero meters per second squared. And if the acceleration is equal to zero, this means that the net force acting on each block is also equal to zero. So this is another instance of equilibrium, although it was sort of phrased differently to try to maybe throw us off. But definitely these blocks are still in equilibrium. So this means that any force that's pulling block A to the left has to be balanced out by the force pulling it to the right. This means that the tension is going to be 25 newtons. The tensions in the rope are the same as explained earlier, so that means the tension in the rope connected to block B is also 25 newtons. And then continuing this logical progression of ideas, remember block B is in equilibrium as well, so if there's an upward force of 25 newtons, there must be a downward force also equal to 25 newtons in order to kind of cancel out the upward force. So the weight of that hanging block must also be 25 newtons to keep block B in equilibrium. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. Of course, please do not feel obligated. Thanks for watching.